welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at numeracy questions. Numeracy questions come up in the National Five paper in two ways. They're often within a question where you're given a paragraph of information to read and then have a series of questions to answer. The two ways that they can come are as pure numeracy questions that don't really involve chemistry and ones which involve a small amount of chemistry knowledge. First of all, we'll have a look at ones which don't really involve too much chemistry. So here you're given a sentence about carbon capture and storage. So you're told that carbon capture and storage can capture 90% of carbon dioxide produced by burning fossil fuels. Carbon capture and storage is a process which is used within power stations to capture and store the carbon dioxide produced. The question then asks you if 300 tonnes of carbon dioxide is produced, calculate the mass of carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere if carbon capture and storage is, is used. So overall you're producing 300 tonnes, 90% of which is captured by the carbon capture and storage process. So we are trying to work out how much carbon dioxide is released. So if 90% is captured, then 10% will be released. So we're trying to find 10% of 300 tonnes. So 300 tonnes is 100% of all of the carbon dioxide produced. We're going to divide that by 10 to get 10%. So 30 tonnes will be the 10% of carbon dioxide which is released into the atmosphere. Here's another question which looks like you need to know about chemistry to be able to answer this num numeracy question. However, you don't really. So you've got a table here which tells you about the different active ingredients in a tablet, how they react with acid, how much they cost per gram, and how much is needed in grams to neutralise 20 centimetres cubed of acid. For three of them, you're given the cost of neutralising 20 centimetres cubed of acid, and for one, magnesium carbonate, you're not told how much it costs, and that is what we have to calculate. So here we have the cost per gram, so it's 16 pence per gram. And we have the mass that is needed to neutralise 20 centimetres cubed of acid. So we need 0 0.7 grams. We are to work out the cost of neutralising the 20 centimetres cubed of acid. So we need 0 0.7 grams, it costs 16 pence per gram. So we're going to multiply the two together and that takes us to 11.2 pence to neutralise the acid. Here's another example where you've been given a lot of information from which to answer a numerical question. Pause the video now and try this example. So in this question, you're given a lot of information about high pressure chemistry. And you're asked to calculate pressure in atmospheres when you have a certain pressure in gigapascals. So we're looking for information to help us get there. So we're told that 1000 gigapascals is the same as 10 million atmospheres. So this is where we need to start on this question. So our 1000 gigapascals is the same as 10 million atmospheres. So if we divide by 1000, we can find out what one gigapascal is. So that will give us 10,000 atmospheres. We then need to multiply up by 190 to give us 1,000,000 
900,000 atmospheres as our answer. The other type of numerical question is a numerical question which has a small amount of chemistry calculation involved as well. So here we're given some information about bananas. They contain 0 0.358 grams of potassium in every 100 grams and you're to work out the number of moles of potassium in 100 grams of bananas. So to do this, you're using the moles equals mass divided by gram formula mass triangle. The mass being 0 0.358 grams from the question, because we're just looking at 100 grams of bananas. We're going to divide by the gram formula mass of potassium to get 0 0.009 moles. Here's a question where you're given quite a bit of information to then work out a numerical ke uh, chemistry answer. Pause the video now. So within this question, we're given information about a process for storing hydrogen. And the part that we're needing to look at for the numerical part of the question is right here at the end, where it tells us that one litre of the structure can store 41 grams of hydrogen gas. We're trying to calculate the number of moles of hydrogen that can be stored in one litre. So in one litre, we can store 41 grams. We want to turn that 41 grams into moles. Now, we're also told in the question that hydrogen has the formula H2, which you should know as it's a diatomic molecule. So to be able to get moles, we need to do mass divided by gram formula mass. So with hydrogen being H2, that is 2 times 1, which is 2 grams. So we're going to do 41 divided by 2 to give us 20.5 moles. Let's have a look at two other questions. Pause the video now and try and answer this question on almonds. So in this question, we're given information about the vitamin and mineral content of almonds in 100 grams. And we're trying to find the mass of almonds that we need to eat to get 100% of your daily intake of iron. So we're looking at this line of the table. And bearing in mind that this table is about 100 grams of almonds. So... If you eat 100 grams of almonds, you get 29% of your daily intake of iron. So if we divide by 29, we can find out how we would get 1% of our daily intake. So you would need to eat 3.45 grams to get 1%. So if we then multiply by 100 to get 100% of our daily intake of iron, that will be 345 grams of almonds. Pause the video now and try and answer this question about a bottle of water. So in this question we're given some information about a bottle of water. We know that it's a 500ml bottle we're told that one gram is equal to 1,000 milligrams and within the label you're told how many milligrams per litre you have. We're trying to calculate the number of moles of magnesium in the 500 ml bottle. So we're looking at this line of the table. So if we start from how much magnesium we have on the label in 1,000 millilitres, which is a litre, we have 26 milligrams of magnesium. 
we want to look at a 500ml bottle, so we need to divide both sides by 2, so that will be 13 milligrams. You need to convert your 13 milligrams into grams, which is dividing by 1000 as well. And now we need to find out how many moles we have. So moles equals mass divided by gram formula mass. And if we do that, we find that we have 0 0.0005 moles of magnesium. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem or on Instagram, Miss Adams Chemistry, for regular updates on new videos and flashcards. Bye for now.